So you guys remember when uh, this Time Attack FRS made 568 horsepower? And then we didn't make it to Grid Live at Road Atlanta. That, that happened. Well, now we're finally at a racetrack. We're gonna do a test and tune today where we're really gonna find all the, we're gonna test all the quirks, the stuff, all the tuning, all the stuff that I don't understand. All that stuff's gonna happen today. And hopefully, if everything goes well, we take it to an actual racetrack like, and, and do some time attack runs like uh, the last grid life round five at Gingerman in October. Hopefully, we can make it to that if everything sails smoothly today. Okay, the Time Attack car is making its maiden voyage. First time on track in about two years. It just went down the back straight. They gotta do some tuning stuff. Uh, they're just doing one lap, and uh, then they're gonna bring it back in, and we'll see the data and stuff, I guess, yeah. and nothing exploded. Uh, the car that John was using, the, the red car, uh, it, he, he's smelling some uh, some fuel, so he checked the, uh, the fuel buckets back here and uh, he made sure those were tight. And there's no brake lights right now on the blue car, so John's upside down. He's checking. <laughs> that if you stall the car when you're on the track that's going to turn back off and he's got it you aren't going to be able to reach it you know so let's don't stall it by Draggy. <laughs> so it's a GPS oh. module that does acceleration from a, a standing start. Oh yeah. 6130. So, yeah. You know if you stop and then you enter the track but you don't go over 60, you can then floor it and it'll give you a 60 to 130 time. Sweet. Probably be the fastest BRZ on Draggy's <laughs> website. Okay, honey.
back in? Oh, what? On the second run, it blew a PCB valve that has oil and stuff for the emissions that we don't use anymore, and it got a whole bunch of oil in the engine bay. So now uh, we clean it up with some brake clean and some towels, and now <laughs> we're just letting it, uh, it air dry so it doesn't combust when we start it up again. But Eric made a new clamp, and he says it's gonna hold this time. While this car gets uh, gets tuned, I'm gonna ride along with John in the red one. I just get a normal seatbelt? Yeah. This is the right amount of power for the car. Like, with the turbo, making some power, this is how they should have come. But we were just going sideways. We could not get any rear grip. These tires, they're uh, the Toyo R888s, but we were struggling to get any grip out of the rear tires. Apparently, these are like really old, maybe two, three years. We just need new rubber on here. These are like a 100 tread, 100 tread word tire. It should be giving you more grip, it's just, Nah, it just felt really greasy. Like when we we're coming around that big long sweeping turn, I just felt the rear end kind of like losing traction the entire way, and then it just kind of snapped. And uh, John, John was not happy about that. So since these tires are kind of old, and we're waiting on the tune for the other car, since it's got some more oiling problems, uh, we're gonna see if this thing can get sideways, do a little drifting, maybe. We'll see what it can do. Ah, oh, come on. Is traction control on? Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't gonna work, was it? <laughs> yeah, there you go. So we're back at the shop now and uh, we didn't actually get that sideways. I mean, it was cool, but we need to work on our drifting. But let me explain what happened to the time attack car. So the time attack car, it was always overheating. We get like a half a lap in or sometimes three quarters of a lap in. Jeremy would just come back in the pits because the oil temperature got way too high and it never got better. So I thought the whole trip was kind of like a failure. So. Oh, that sucks. It just keeps getting hot. Until I talked to the tuner and he told me that he got a bunch of work done. Like all the tuning, all the safety parameters, it was all done. He got to do all that with just the small amount of driving that Jeremy got to do. But the really hot oil temperature is still a problem. So as soon as the car got back into the shop, um, our fabricators, Andrew and Eric, they went right to work on trying to address a new oil cooler system that's gonna keep temperatures lower, hopefully. Um, they made a cowling ducting system that's gonna block all the air that would normally go through like the outside of the bumpers around the intercooler and oil cooler setup. So now it's directly feeding into the oil cooler, the intercooler and the radiator and no air is gonna be escaping. It's all gonna be funneled 
right into that area to hopefully cool everything down. Um, and we also got a new oil cooler. It's even bigger, it's more efficient. It's actually, I'll show you a clip right here of the size comparison. It's like almost twice the size. And, and actually the car's not, it's not back there. Um, it's actually in Detroit at Motor Vista speed, speed Ring right now. And we just got a text that the car did about three laps before it was overheating. So it's way better than half a lap. So what Eric and Andrew did was great, it worked. We just need to do it better. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, even though it was kind of a little bit longer. I hope you're okay with longer vlogs. Uh, but that's all I got. Hopefully, the next time we vlog will be a grid life round five. Is that jinxing myself? Okay, hopefully we're vlogging at grid life next time. I'll see you guys later.